Okay, today is May 25th, 2019. Had to think about it there for a second. Okay, I found... I'm going to explain when I first hear, heard about a seared conscience. And I, and I hope that people will listen to this video. And I hope uh, that if anybody has subscribed to me that runs across this video and you've heard me say this in the past, please agree if you've heard me say this stuff in the past. Okay? One day, I listened to a, a pastor... And I'm going to talk about this guy thoroughly uh, as much as I can remember. This guy, um, he became a pastor, but when he first, um, before he became a pastor, he didn't believe in once saved. But since, and, and, I'll, and I'll say, he was a Baptist pastor. And he... Um, he didn't believe in once saved, but he, he incorporated it because he wanted to be a Baptist pastor. And not every Baptist believes in, in once saved and everything. But I, want, I need you to hear this. Please, before you stop this video, please listen through on this. So, um, he had a vision or a dream. He didn't go into detail with that. I, can, I cannot remember. And he said... That uh, he witnessed hell and he witnessed these people that he preached to at his congregation. And he went to hell and he saw these people. And these people said, and these people commented to him, like, look what you, look what you taught us. Look what you taught us. Okay. So I know why he had vis this vision or dream. God was just basically showing him what he was preaching was wrong. What he was teaching was wrong. And see, you got to think, you got to give, you got to give the guy a little bit of credit because he didn't believe in once saved when he first, uh, wanted to go into, uh, being a preacher. Well, I, I can't go into any more detail other than the fact that after he was uh, after he was done talking about having the vision and dream, he talked about a seared conscience, and I had never heard about the seared conscience at all. And uh, he said that when a person gets a seared conscience, it almost he said it's almost impossible to come out of it. He said it's almost impossible to come out of it, which I know you can, a person, if they have a seared conscience, they can come out of it. They just almost have to have the act of God to do it. So, um, so I know when I read where the seared conscience is, and it's Paul that talks about the seared conscience, you know, the, the apostle or the disciple that everybody wants to boast about, you know. So I, I need to, I need to boast, I need to boast that up because everybody boasting and shows pride in his message. God breathed. So there's no doubt that it's God breathed. So, um, I looked it up in the Bible and I know that that's what's wrong with most Christians out here. Well, I witnessed a comment a month or so back where this person said when Paul was, was referring to a seared conscience, he was talking to Christians about Christians. So I already knew that after I heard about the seared conscience, what, what this guy was talking about was talking about a person that has sold themselves on a certain way and their way is wrong and it i don't care how much you say something to a person with a seared conscience for some odd reason they can never witness the truth 
I mean, if, if I tell you that God told me we could lose the Holy Spirit and you say, well, I believe in once saved. Well, how is a person that has sold himself ever to come to the truth? Well, like I said, I know why the scripture in the Bible says you were better off not hearing the truth or you were better off not hearing the word, excuse me, because if you sell yourself and you're wrong, there are consequences behind it. And I don't care how much you argue with people. I do not care how much you argue with these people. They will never recognize the truth. So I commented on a video a year back. It was a Paul Washer video. And, you know, I wish I had as many people commented about him to me because it would make me feel so good that at least I'm reaching out. But, you know, I, I understand that I'm not the best Christian out here. As a matter of fact, a lot of these people don't even talk, most Christians out here, they don't even talk about the things that they go through. And I talk about all the things that I've fallen into since God made me a watchman. But that's irrelevant in this message. What's relevant is, so I, I, I for some reason, ran across that video again. And <clears throat> I saw my comment and I had a lot of people like my comment, a lot of people, but you got to understand you're either going to believe one way or the other. Okay. You're either going to believe one way or the other. So I, I was reading down and I want you to hear this comment. I want you to hear this comment that I just witnessed for the first time. For the very first time, I saw somebody make this comment. And I've said this, I don't know how many times, this same comment. Here is what this person posted. A conscience seared with a branding iron does not mean disbelief. It means a belief so strong in the wrong things that it is not teachable and not correctable. This is the majority of Christianity today. They don't want to hear the truth. They, they want their ears tickled. They believe they have the truth. So they don't want to hear about sin or repentance or walk the way Elohim wants us to walk. Now, isn't that so strange that I would run across someone and when I wrote that, when I went to my comment, I didn't comment about this. I didn't make that comment. So nobody, nobody copied my comment. Nobody copied my comment. And again, I'm not wanting somebody to, to sell themselves on me. They need to sell themselves on the word of God. That's what they need to sell themselves on. Not some man's word, not some denomination. And that is exactly what people have done. That is exactly what people have done. And I'm telling you, I'm, the more I watch videos of pastors out here that people boast so much about, the more I see that most of them preachers are so false. They're such a fraud. They don't even have the understanding themselves. For a person, me, that has not even read the Bible, nothing proud about that. Nothing proud about that at all. Nothing. You know, I deleted a couple of videos a minute ago because I started having problems with uh, not being able to comment back to people. Like YouTube is monitoring my videos and they don't even want me to comment with people. Maybe it's God. Maybe it's my cell phone. Maybe it's a worldwide internet. Maybe it's YouTube. You know, the thing is, I can't keep on making these videos trying to get people to see the truth. I understand people don't like my videos and maybe they don't like the way I look. Maybe they don't like the way I talk. 
maybe I don't throw a whole bunch of graphics in my videos for some reason everybody loves the graphics and you know I don't know what to say and believe me I'm not out here so people can't see my face there's my face if that hurts anybody out there but I don't you know I, I can't tickle nobody's ears I can't feed the malarkey that people are preaching out here. I cannot. I cannot. You know, a minute ago, I started questioning myself. I've made like five or six videos in a row and I've got no views. I don't know if they're, mon I don't know if they're monitoring or whatever you call it. Um, I know one thing that a video that I did have a video I did have up, <clears throat> one of them I deleted, I went and looked one day, I had seven views, I went back and I looked, I had four views, then I went back and I looked and I had like five, and then it went back down. And the thing that makes, the thing that hurts me is I'm feeling like, and, 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 I'm, and I'm grateful that people watched the video until I took it down, and I did take it down a minute ago. You know, I already had a video that was like it. The only thing I did was try to sit here and tell people the things that God showed me. And so not only have I made that video about four or five times, it's no longer up again. And I'm not posting it up again. I, I, I you know, I don't even know if God wants me to. I truly don't. I truly do not even know if God wants me to. But see, the, you know, when people don't like my videos, it makes me start doubting myself. Makes me start doubting where these messages come from. Well, why did I know all this information and sound just like this other person and I hadn't even read the Bible? And look at all the professing Christians out here that are not even preaching the right word and they're not even believing the right word and they're not even following the right word. And, you know, I, like I said, with God telling me we could lose the Holy Spirit, I know exactly what would happen, people. If I started telling you that there's a once saved, if I started telling you that, uh, that you couldn't lose the Holy Spirit, if I sit here and started telling people something that was false, then I know exactly what I would deserve. I would deserve a seared conscience just like the majority of Christians around the world are right now. That's exactly what I would deserve. You know, I would love for people to sit here and ask God to help them that they've got a seared conscience. But I could just imagine somebody listening to this video, 13 minutes and 15 or 16, 17 seconds, that, that, a, that a person would think that I'm wrong about the things that I've been sitting here posting all this time. You know, I know that I've got my issues. And I've got to overcome my issues. And I've done real good. I'm telling you, I got tempted really good tonight. Multiple times. Multiple times. And I'm going to do my best until this is all over to fight the temptation. You know, everything that people says, it's right there in the Bible, I believe. But I'm not selling in my, I'm not selling myself. I'm not going to sell myself. I cannot do it. I cannot seem to come to any conclusion to sell myself, to sit here and say that it's all about believing and having faith and not talking about works. I can't do it. I cannot do it. Because it makes me feel like all these people out here that talk about faith and believing, but they absolutely are hideous to the word works, makes me think they've got a seared conscience. Because you would think that if they're going to talk about works, I mean, if they're going to talk about faith and believing, you would think that they would at least talk about works. Because if you don't talk about works, you're leading people astray. That's not what saves anyone. And I've never said it has. I've never not one time. I've ever won against the word of God. 
The only thing that hurts me is, and I've said it time and time again, the thing that I don't like, the one, the things I don't like hearing people are this dispensation of grace as if we've got some unfavored amount of grace where you can go live your high life. You can be a drunkard. You can be a pedophile. You can do this and you can do that. I mean, I need to sound like a pastor, like I'm, like I'm preaching this malarkey out here. Oh, you can't lose salvation. I mean, forget what Paul says about adultery. Forget about Paul where he talks about adultery. Forget about the Bible where it says about homosexuality. Forget about all this. Forget about the sexual immorality. But I'm not going to ever do it. I'm not going to ever do it. I'm not ever going to do it. I'm not. I'm not ever selling myself to some to sitting here saying that Jesus is just a simple man, some just simple prophet. He is the son of man. He is the in beginning of Genesis, of John. I'm not selling myself. And I wish people would, would try to not sell themselves. You know, I could sit here, I could sit here and, and if I knew it, it, I wish I had a list of every denomination and what everything that they believed. It just went down the list and said, false, f false, 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 false. I know right now to, to sit here and think to sit here and think the things that people are thinking, I, I just, I, I can't, I can't, I, it doesn't make sense to me. It does not make sense to me. Do I believe in a dispensation of grace? I sure do. But I don't think it's something where you can go out and live the lifestyle of the way you were before you gave your life to Christ and you're going to inherit the kingdom. And, and, and I know that God will, will take you out of his grace. I know you'll fall out of his grace if you go back to that lifestyle. I mean, there's evidently a reason why there's a Hebrews 10.25 or 10.26 if you go back to willful sin. If you go back, if you keep on sinning, like the NIV says, one says keep on, one of them says willful sin. If you go back to that lifestyle, you will lose the Holy Spirit working in your life. And that's the truth. I don't even know why I would doubt myself, but I, I would like some kind of encouragement. I would like to at least have, uh, you know, somebody out here. I get people out here, call themselves God, and probably are sitting here making, I mean, I sit here and have somebody make, make a comment, post it as God, but it's not God. You know, some little, I mean, and then, and then have people sit here and say this stuff talk like I'm an, I'm an idiot, like there's something wrong with me. I know what's wrong with this world. Most Christians do not fear God. That's a fact. It is a fact. That's why they don't even have, what do you get from, what do you get from fear again? Is it wisdom? <laughs> That's right. Isn't it wisdom that you get from fearing God? I, I've told God before I didn't want to fear him, but I wanted to be living for him. Does that make sense? I would love to be perfect like Christ because I don't want to have nothing to do with this world. I don't want to have nothing to do with this wicked preaching that people have to, I mean, that literally people have sold themselves but unbelievable that I would find somebody's comment that sounded just like mine about a seared conscience. And that's exactly where the majority of Christians are today. I mean, I can guarantee you this right now. Right now here in Oklahoma City, they're having like a Jehovah's Witness thing down at the fairgrounds. I'd be willing to bet that I could go down there and I could pull up 
the, the King James Version or any Bible out here. Well, not the NIV. The NIV has that scripture taken out where it says God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one. That's how beautiful a Bible that is. And guess who partakes into that Bible more than anybody? The Baptist Church. That's their favorite version of the Bible is the NIV. One that's got like 20 something scriptures that was in the King James is no longer in the NIV. And I know a lot of Baptists out here don't believe in the Trinity. But I'm not no Catholic, so I'm not selling myself as a Catholic either because I know right now God never wanted nobody to confess their sins to some man in a booth. If you're going to confess your sins, you're going to confess them to God. And just because you're confessing them to man, what makes you think that God's can, is cleanses them of all unrighteousness? What makes anybody think that confessing sins to a man in a booth is God's going to cleanse them of all unrighteousness? Do you hear that? Do you hear that? And to sit here and go to a church where people know that we, people out here shouldn't be calling nobody father. Except the father in heaven. I mean, this is really a ruined world, a ruined world. Heck, everybody wants to sit here and try to get atheists to come to Christ. But heck, why, why would an atheist want... I made this comment the other day. Okay, let me, let me go on. Let me keep on going. Why would I want... If I was one of these with these false doctrines preaching to ear tickling, why would I want an atheist to come to God if they're going to preach the wrong message? Now, like this one guy says from... Uh, from uh what's his name uh, trying to think israel news live the guy from israel news live he made a comment one night in one of his videos he said why would i want the jewish people to believe what we believe Why would he why would he want Jewish people to believe what most of the heretics believe today? I mean you'd be going from damned to damned. That's exactly what it would be. Well, you know, I can already see 22 minutes and 48 seconds into this video if anybody even went three minutes into it. As soon as I talked against once saved, as soon as somebody heard that, they were probably, get going. I mean, I'm just grateful to run across somebody out here that's got some sense. I just can't tickle nobody's ears. I can't give nobody no cold, lukewarm message. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. I mean, I got a sign from God to uh, not not tonight, not the not the 24th, the 23rd. Walked outside and was talking to God, and I know God's with me. I wish God was with everybody, but they better shaping up. They better change their perspective on how God wants us to walk his walk, our walk with Christ. Or that's not going to happen. And no, that doesn't mean I want to go to a non-denomination church or to believe in non-denomination. Because if you'll go and listen to them, they'll still preach against sin. I mean, for sin. Most of them won't even talk about the rights and wrongs at a non-denomination church either. So why would I want to sell myself to a non-denomination church either? 
I know what Life Church is, and I know exactly what they stand for, sin. I've already witnessed people that have gone to Life Church, and why do they go to Life Church? So they can sin. That's exactly what it is. I mean, I, I really do love my friend. I really do love my friend, but the day that he walked up to me and told me he finally found, he found a church where he could go and drink with the pastor, I, I, I was thinking to myself, you have got to be kidding me that that is even a thought. That is even a thought that runs through anybody's mind. Can you imagine? I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it, man. I can't imagine where anybody should be fellowshipping with their pastor and drinking. Because that makes me think, like a lot of people out here say, Oh, well, the Bible doesn't say you can't drink one or two beers. But do you ever stop at one or two? Do you ever stop at one or two? I'll tell you, I got tempted the other night. I bought a four-pack Budweiser. Um, don't think I'm boasting about this either, or pride. I've just, I fought the temptation. I did, I fought the temptation. I bought a four pack Budweiser. Um, Budweiser, uh, what kind was that? Clamato, Clamato. I drank two and I got a buzz and I stopped. I, I had the third one in my hand to drink it. And I know that I would have been beyond buzzed if I'd have drank that third one. I don't know if I'd have been drunk but I would have been beyond the buzz and I stopped. I had it in my hand, people. You guys do not even know that how I had it in my hand. As a matter of fact, it comes in a little four pack plastic thing and I already had it pulled from the plastic to drink it. But I didn't get drunk. I didn't get drunk. That's what mattered to me. I gave in to temptation about a week or so ago. And I and I just bragged in a video that I was gonna try to do good. <laughs> See? I mean I know people say that when a person walks with God they're per that they don't walk in sin, but I'm telling you, it, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. All I know is you got to fight the temptation. And if you got a seared conscience, you don't like this message right here, more than likely you got a seared conscience because I know what a seared conscience is. And I'm lucky that I wasn't given up to a seared conscience or a rep I, I was given up to a reprobate mind or a carnal mind. I know exactly what it feels like. God has done it two times since I, since he, since he made me a watchman twice. Did I feel like that every thought that I had that came across my mind was evil? But that's no different. I guarantee you a reprobate mind and a carnal mind is no different than a seared conscience. It's no different. I was in the same position as people that had a seared conscience that have a seared conscience. You guys don't, I mean, you either believe me or you know, or you think I'm a liar. It's your choice. Every thought that went through my mind was evil and bad and wicked. And I was doing wicked things. I hope people come to the truth.